We've been growing carrots for a few years, not successfully at all. This year we did three things different that I would, thought I would share in case you're also struggling to grow carrots. The first thing we did was carrot row spacing. So we spaced ours really far apart because we have the space and we wanted to be able to weed between them easier. So we did them far enough apart that we could wheel hoe between the rows. So our beds are about three feet wide with a small pathway. So we did two rows of carrots, two rows of carrots. The second thing we did was we used baler twine and Marius made these wooden stakes and we planted the carrots along the string line and then we kept the string line up so we can tell where the carrots are which made it easier for me to wheel hoe when the carrots are really tiny. The third thing we did was we covered it in doubled over frost cloth, remay, whatever you want to call it, this white stuff. We put it doubled over for two reasons. Doubled over was to keep moisture in to help germination because carrots are so notoriously bad at germinating. And then once they're germinated, which is now, although the germination's bad at this end of the garden because it's drier, we're gonna water tomorrow. We are now going to unfold it so it's single layer over top of the string line. We're probably gonna put some posts down the middle to protect our carrots from the we'll rust cover fly. the carrots, we will get the rust fly and our carrots will still be okay to eat, but they will not keep at all. So this is a wheel hoe. It's a pretty old school tool. They're hard to find right now. They keep getting back ordered everywhere. This is a Haas one. And we just have the two, I think they call them cultivators, but you can get different attachments for them. And it makes it so easy to hill, sorry, not to hill, but to, hoe long rows, especially if you just get the weeds when they're nice and small, just irritate them, expose their roots, and let the sun bake them. It's been a game changer in our garden. Marius also uses the wheel hoe, him and the boys when they were hilling potatoes. Um, someone goes in the pathway with the wheel hoe to loosen up the dirt so that it's easier to hill. And there actually is a hilling attachment. Um, there are plows. <sighs> Mosquitoes. There are a plow that you just put the plow facing outwards and it helps you hill. So maybe we might invest in some of those in the future. Probably would be helpful. But for now, this is what we have and it works great. So these are all our brassicas here. Some squashes that aren't doing so good because of the cold. The trellises will have peas. This has green beans. It needs to be re-tarped. Not tarped, but recovered. And now we're gonna recover the carrots since they're all done being weeded. And the potatoes look marvelous, all freshly hilled. All done now. It looks a little like Tent City. I still have to fix the green beans, but everything else is looking really good. forgot one last carrot growing tip for you. When you plant your carrots, go slow and space the seeds. It's painful, but it really helps you to not have to thin so much and that will save you in the long run. So go slow, space your seeds, even though the temptation is to rush. It's hot, we're sweaty, and uh, I got heat stroke. Yes, Hamish had some heat stroke yesterday. And we are going to deal with the bees so we can get back inside and drink some iced tea. Hamish and I are out here checking the bees. Actually, Ham, don't worry about it. Just bring me the metal rack. We're taking off the feeders. I'm gonna put leave the feeder buckets here for the bees to fly back into the hive later. So we're now, they're getting into, they're filling out their eighth and ninth one, 
when I checked them the other day, they were on about seven. So I knew it was time to put the next super on. And we're also gonna check the other hive and see where they're at. Um, we are very new to bees. We are new bees. And uh, Hamish is wearing Mary's suit. He wanted to come help me. But they seem to be doing good. We had a really wet spring. And that wet? it was pretty wet. But we have very chill bees. We don't smoke them. I did when I first installed them. But other than that, they're just very hot out. But now that the garden work is done, we're going to check the bees. And once we're done the bees, then... I'm gonna work on the computer and everybody else is gonna do inside stuff because it's getting hot already. This hive is not as strong, although since I checked it, I only checked them two or three days ago, we've had really sunny weather since then, and they are moving very much outwards now. So I bet you in another couple of days, I'm gonna to need to add a box on top. For now, I'm just removing the feeder as well and leaving the boards out here so the bees can come off. So we'll just put a lid on and leave these guys be. Do you want to go run around in front of Clover? Go around wide so that she doesn't run, like go towards the hay barn? We maybe left the gate open. <laughs> if you go wide around, you won't push her forward, you'll turn her around. No, we don't want to push her into the gate. You did the good thing. Our haying equipment's in here, you can't see it from the grass. But that's why we have two of the milk cows in here. And they will eat down all around it and we'll be able to get at the haying equipment again. Some winter bedding composting. So we're all done. I got the boxes that had the feeders in them. I left the feeders and the feeder boards, feeder buckets and boards, out there for the bees to fly off and back in. Pam, you want to come over so I can close this gate? And now we need to go inside for the heat. I'm doing something. We are um, not acclimatized to this heat. It has been like just above freezing in the morning some days. And um, it's 11 in the morning and it's already 26, 28 degrees Celsius, which is like 80 to 85 Fahrenheit. So yeah, we're hot. We're not acclimatized.